I've had some requests to do a making a memory bear video as sort of a sew along with me or a sewing tutorial on how to with commentary so that's what I'm going to start today. I've broke it up into five different steps. You can do these steps five different days. I feel like it's a very low stress way to sew the bear, a very low stress way to break all the steps up. Today's step is to gather supplies, attach interfacing, and cut out. So that's what we will do day one. This is the bear pattern that I'm going to be using. It also comes with instructions that you can read, so I suggest that you also read those instructions along with watching this video. Along with the pattern, you will need interfacing to stabilize your fabric. I like Pellon SF101. You'll also need scissors. You'll need some pins. For the eyes, I like to use 12 millimeter doll eyes, which I get at Hobby Lobby. You'll need an iron for fusing the interfacing to your clothing. You'll need a very small piece of black felt for the nose. You'll need needles for hand sewing. And while it's not totally necessary, I think a glue gun makes your life a little easier when making a bear. Next, you'll want to gather whichever clothing you decide to make a memory bear out of. For the one that I'm making today, I'm using a customer's mom's wedding dress. I've made bears out of all types of clothing, from flannel shirts to fleece pajamas to cotton shirts, button-up dress shirts, almost anything works. So what I'm doing first is I'm cutting out a piece of the dress that I'm going to use for the pattern piece. I found it's easiest to cut out a big piece of fabric first and attach the interfacing first before you cut out the actual pattern piece. You need two pieces of fabric for each pattern piece. So you're going to layer your pieces of clothing wrong sides together Put your pattern piece on top and cut out. Now it's time to cut out the interfacing. You'll also need two pieces of interfacing per pattern piece. You will layer the interfacing bumpy sides together. Now you're going to lay your cut clothing fabric on top of the shape flex and cut out. It didn't occur to me how actually terrible it is to use a white piece of clothing to do a tutorial since the shape flex is also white but this is the only order for a memory bear I currently have, so we're gonna go with it. In the future, I'm going to label the fabric in, a, in some way and label which side is the shape flex, so it, it's less confusing. To layer the shape flex interfacing and the clothing, you'll do it in this order. The clothing will go right side down wrong side up and you will put the shape flex bumpy side down smooth side up for each piece 
of the pattern. Here I'm cutting out the back pattern piece interfacing. Now it's time to fuse the interfacing to the clothing. So you will first do closed fabric right side down, wrong side up. You'll then put the interfacing bumpy side down, which is the adhesive, smooth side up. You can use your iron on a steam setting and just iron over the whole piece. Or you can use a pressing cloth and a spray bottle. You would put this pressing cloth down, spray it lightly, and then just use your iron and glide it over until the fabric is dry. So I've fused the interfacing to my first piece of fabric and here I'm just putting the back pattern piece on top. I'm going to use my pressing cloth and iron over the pattern piece just to make sure it's all flat because I use it a lot and it gets kind of crinkly and it gets bent so I just want to make sure it's flat. You will continue fusing your shape flex interfacing to your clothing pieces with clothing right side down shape flex buppy side touching the wrong side of your fabric until all pieces have their fusible interfacing fused to it for stability. And now it's time for me to cut out the front pattern piece. So I layered my two fabrics wrong sides together, put my front pattern piece on top and I'm going to use my pressing cloth just to make sure my pattern piece is nice and smooth. Now it's time to pin and cut. You'll want to pin around the whole outside edge of your pattern piece.
and you will repeat for the back pattern piece also. Cutting out the pattern pieces is the last step of day one. If you have any questions at all, please just leave them in the comments and I will help you with any question that you might have. I will do my best. It's probably easier if you also read the directions that came with the pattern along with watching this tutorial. So thanks for watching. Please ask me any questions you might have and I will do my best to help you. Tomorrow we will do day two. See you then.